All right. Thank you. Let's call the uh, September 12th special meeting of the Environment, Environmental and Utilities Commission to order. And we'll start, as we usually do, with the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Thank you. So starting with item 1A, presentations by the public on matters not on the agenda within the jurisdiction of the commission. I don't see any members of the public here, so we'll move on to item 1B, commission communications. Jennifer or Paulina, no, no communications. All right. Moving to item 2, uh, consent agenda, consideration of approval of the minutes from the August 13th meeting. Does anyone have any corrections to the minutes? Do we have a motion to approve? I move I'll, to approve the minutes. I'll second. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Minutes are approved. Uh, regular agenda, item 3, uh, consideration of a presentation and discussion of procurement of a computerized maintenance management system. Mr. Roberts, the floor is yours. There we go. Good evening, the Commissioner and Representative Commission. My name is William Roberts, and I'm the Public Works Operations Manager, and I will be presenting the Computerized Maintenance Management System, otherwise known as the CMMS. A little bit about the introduction and summary. I'm going to briefly describe, go over the definition of the CMMS, uh, the CMMS capabilities the budget slash cost impact, and the CMMS implementation, and also the modules. A computerized maintenance management system, CMMS, is a type of management software that performs functions in support of management and tracking of O&M activities. Management soon found that relying on pen and paper records to keep track of maintenance data was unreliable practice. As a result, maintenance was only performed when something went wrong. It was reactive rather than, pre rather than preventative. Presently, the City of West Sacramento does not have a unified CMS and up-to-date asset management system for preventative maintenance scheduling, which is critical for work order management, life cycle costing, and capital planning. Although the City has a variety of primitive manual work order processes in use, the current methodologies lack integration capabilities and mobile accessibility. Staff seek to procure a single asset management and work order system that can be used citywide. Some of the CMMS capabilities is, as you look at your screen, hopefully the folks at home can see this. Uh, number one, it's a work order generation and tracking by equipment and component. It actually has a historical tracking of all work orders generated which become sortable by equipment, date, person uh, responding. Uh, tracking of scheduled and unscheduled maintenance activities. Storing of maintenance procedures as well as all warranty information by component. And real-time reports of ongoing uh, work activity. Next slide will show you a little graphical for the folks at home too. So, as you can see, all these capabilities uh, tie into one central hub, uh, which is CMMS. So if you look at the outside bubbles, uh, 3-1 customer call center, 
uh, has a capability of actually integrating a, a call center for the customers for West Sacramento, um, which is more uh, efficient and uh, uh, for the, the call center and also the workers. Uh, the replacement equipment, asset management, preventative and corrective maintenance, quality control, contract management, I can go on and on, but these are the primary uh, parts of the wheel that um, are very most important for operations. Some of the budget cost impact. Uh, the proposal is estimated to be a one-time cost to public works operations between $463,000 to $500,000 with a $30,000 to $50,000 annual fee pending contract negotiations. Staff proposes using a combination of interdepartmental funding that will be shared a, a percentage based on the number of employees. Public Works is currently looking into alternative funding methodologies and examples. So as you can see, uh, the very top there, um, the sewer section, uh, we have 9.5 employees. And so 21% um, contribution, which is $105,000. Uh, the water distribution, we have nine employees, 20.2% contribution to the CMMS. And when I say this, um, just picture every employee having a, a PDA or, a, or a, an iPad out in the field. So it's based on the number of employees. So the more number of employees that you have, of course, the more work orders they'll be inputting into the system. So we did a, a methodology based on the number of employees. Um, so as you go down the list there, you see facilities, fleet, uh, Metro K roads, roads to uh, two employees all the way down to Storm, which is one employee. And that's a very busy employee, only one employee. So to move on to the implementation, um, we're looking at uh, Public Works is suggesting a phased approach uh, for the asset management program implementation, starting with Public Works Department and eventually making this citywide. So we're in hopes down the road, uh, once Public Works is the, I want to say the guinea pig, but we're more or less a pilot program, once we prove it's successful, we will basically, police department, uh, the fire department, parks, everybody will see um, the benefits of the CMMS uh, for tracking and everything. So down the road, we're hoping for a, a citywide um, people jumping onto the system. The project management, the purpose of this task is to manage the project within schedule, budget, and delivery. The user requirements and business process. The purpose of this task um, are to assess the city's user requirements and map business processes to be used for configurations. Uh, the configure system, as you note on the bullet, uh, this task is to configure CMMS to support city's user needs, functional requirements, and asset management best practices. The integration, um, this is to integrate the CMMS with our current GIS system that we have with the city of West Sacramento. And the field testing is very important. <clears throat> this task is to test the system, resolve issues, and optimize configurations. And the last thing there is training. Uh, this task is to provide pre-deployment training and provide post-deployment support. Some of the modules uh, with the CMMS, there's, there's hundreds of them, but the, the, most, the ones that are most important to the operations groups um, are these uh, five here. So as you know, uh, the work orders, uh, they're created automatically from the maintenance schedule, core module, and the predictive maintenance optional module. Work orders can also be created from service request with a single click. Now what a service request is, is it's a module for the uh, customers. So when a customer calls in uh, to one of our staff members at the South River Road, what will happen is that um, person will create the service request based on what's going on in the field. The service request will be dispatched to a worker in the field. The worker will then drive out there and determine if it needs to be actually hands-on. If he touches, if he or she touches anything in the field, it becomes a work order. So we get a lot of calls where uh, the public call in and they say, hey, you know, I have a, over, uh, a sewer overflowing or a manhole that's overflowing. We get out there and it's something like a garden hose. So we inform the public what's going on. This would not turn into a work order, but a service request. So very important for the customers. The equipment uh, module manages your list of assets. CMMS distinguishes make and model information from equipment information, eliminating the need to maintain this information many times for identical equipment. The maintenance schedules and procedures. Procedures are template work orders. 
The maintenance schedule process creates actual work orders from these procedures according to a schedule, which either can be calendar or metered. And also the last thing here, well actually before the last is parts. Um, it can identify the list of parts. Uh, you can identify one or more storage locations and vendors for parts uh, with core functionality and issue parts to work orders. And lastly, the reporting is huge for us. The database structure is fully documented to help you write reports and track records. So EU Commission or the Council had to have a question on the work orders, like what happened for fiscal year 16, 17 or 17, 18? It's a click of the button. It's a really easy criteria with a query uh, that's already set up for us and it's real time numbers. So it's a huge benefit for the operations, not only operations, but for customers and um, the uh, city departments. So it is respectfully recommend that, recommended that the commission, number one, provide staff with feedback and direction, and number two, recommend that this, this item be forwarded to the city council. At this time, this concludes my presentation. I'll be very happy to answer any questions you may have. I have a question, please. Sure. Uh, you mentioned, you, you referred to this as a pilot program and with many benefits, which I can see just in your brief presentation uh, to sort of innovate or advance the current, maybe more analog sure. <laughs> way of recording things. Um, what I wonder is how will, how will this be measured? Are there performance metrics, any sort of, um, data, for example, between service requests and work orders, um, the follow-up that might be required in that. So I'm looking at a performance management component of this <coughs> software. Is, is that present and, and what can you tell me about that? Sure, it's a great question. Um, what's going on right now is we're in the process of developing the performance standards and measures. Mm -hmm. um, right now everything is very primitive. It's on, it's on paper work orders. And so based on the paper work orders, we've established a baseline uh, Maybe it's a bad example, but a person goes out there and digs a hole. What's it take? How long does it take to dig a hole? So we want to have a, a, a ground zero measuring device, which this will implement. This will help us out tremendously. But like I said, right now, we're in the middle of uh, creating these uh, performance standards. Uh, this goes from pumping facilities, water facilities, um, operations. Um, so I want to know everything what we're doing out in the field. And if we don't have a performance standard based on, on those assets, then we have nothing to measure against. And by implement, 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 implementation of the CMMS, it's basically going to help us out a lot with this uh, uh, performance standards. I'm really looking forward to it. So I have a question about this, the, the public stuff platform sure. and whether there's going to be some sort of online online interface for members of the public to um, use this C or interface with the CMS system in, in some way because the public stuff system I've, I've never used it but it mm -hmm. sounds a lot easier frankly than getting on the phone and calling someone if um, you know, there's a relatively minor maintenance problem and I'd, I'd hope that this system has some sort of um, interface uh, like that sure. without having to actually make a call. Sure, that's, that's great. Um, we've talked to several vendors uh, uh, over the past, I want to say, four to six months. I've been here for a year now. Um, so every vendor is different, and every vendor will tell you that, yes, they can do it, um, you know, given the amount of money you want to give them. Uh, there's a few vendors out there that I've, I've witnessed and seen their modules where um, you know, they, would, they would take place of the public stuff. So um, it's actually called the Three Woman Call Center. And what that would do is basically enable, um, like I said, the public to call in or go to the website, the city website, log on and see what's in there. And there's a link that will take you to, to write out your, your customer call or your discrepancy or your complaint or something good. So with that, um, it's integrated into the CMMS where the module takes over and automatically dispatches a work order or a service request to the field, actually the admin gr the group. Once the admin group receives this call via um, online or the module CMMS, they'll dispatch to the uh, field crew. So we're hoping a vendor out there will actually have something. I'm not saying we're going to like replace public works right now. What I'm saying is, is there, is there anything out there that would be more efficient? 
And if it is, I think we should take a look at it. To kind of piggyback on that question a little bit, is the public stuff the, yes, yeah, sorry. Is the public stuff app the, is that the West Sac Connect application that the city uses currently? That is correct. Okay. Uh, Vin K is here to answer any technical questions, but I've been here for a year, but what I believe it's, it's West Sac Connect, that is which, which is the same thing as the public stuff. Okay. Yeah, when I heard public stuff, I'm like, well, what is that stuff? And, <laughs> You know, so it's West Sac Connect. And you said that, is the city not utilizing any CMMS system currently, any of the departments right now? Zero. Mm. Yeah. From what I know, um, I don't know too much about Excella. And I know, I do know that we do have Excella. And talking to the groups and the superintendents and the engineers and whatnot, it's very limited as far as what it can do, what, uh, what we're looking for. Um, you know, I'm presently talking to the ID department. And if it's something that we can look at as far as creating a module within the Excella, then so be it. But right now, um, we're looking for a one-stop shop, which means a module that takes, a CMS that takes care of the fleet, takes care of the facilities, takes care of operations, water, sewer, drainage, um, the whole thing. So I, I think that, and it sounds like it's a pilot project, and as it can be scalable to the other departments, should be really considered when you're evaluating the different CMMS programs because... One thing that I know about these is sometimes they don't communicate with each other. So if another sure. department is going to utilize the same type of system, you want to make sure that it's able to be used across the fields. Yeah, it'd be nice to get one platform instead of different platforms talking back and forth to each other because that's where we lose communication. Um, if we're looking for a citywide system, which we're looking for, then that will increase the communication tremendously and in turn um, create better customer support for the, uh, the people out in West Sacramento. Um, I have a question about, I guess, how you're going to archive the historical documents, like your old work orders and stuff. I know most of them probably are going to be like probably paper archived because that would be a lot of work to electronically archive them. But like, what about open work orders once you switch over to CMM CMMS? So yeah. Correct, yeah, yeah. What about that? Is that going to get? Are they going to continue paper? Are you guys going to have a way to transfer any of that into the system? Sure, it's a great question. Uh, when I arrived here a year ago, uh, the first thing I saw in the South River Road were, were a, a pile of papers, and that was the work order management system. So my question to the vendors uh, that gave their presentations was, we have so much data right now, uh, piles and piles of, uh, of, of paper, and also Excel spreadsheets and access database. Can all that be integrated into the system? And every vendor that I spoke to said yes. And it's not you know, um, an increase in price because we can do it. That's part of the system. And the vendors know that when they come into a, a city, especially with, without a CMMS, they're going to have that capability because we don't want to lose all the archived records. We want to be able to keep those because it's, it's history. And if we get rid of those archives, we're, we're, in, we're in trouble. So. So every vendor that I have spoken to, and my experience with CMMS uh, with the city of Sacramento, um, we went from paper over to uh, CIS, which is Azteca. And the number one question was, yeah, we had paper work orders, and can we just move all that into the current system, which we could. And it's time consuming, but it's something that can be done. Thank you. Mm -hmm. On your budget slide uh, and the interdepartmental cost sharing, have, have the others agreed to do this and agreed with the methodology, excuse me, the methodology so far? That's a great question. It's always about money. Um, <laughs> so the interdepartment, which is, which is operations, uh, which, which I control and the, the public works uh, uh, manager also, we've sat down and we've discussed this with the public works um, uh, uh, finance director. And uh, this is the first stab at what's the best methodology to, to divide the funds or the, to allocate each department. How much do they spend? Uh, we looked at different ways. For instance, one was the number of work orders. How many work orders, let's say, roads creates in one year? Do we base it on that or do we base it on number of employees? So we went with the number of employees because those will be the most users, users in that group. And as far as... Um, um, saying yes to, yeah, we'll, we'll pay for this. We're, we're yet to look at the budget more in depth and say, okay, is this realistic? And if it's not realistic, there's other, um, you know, uh, ways we can, we can do it and look at the finance to, and, you know, go from there. So, One thing that 
I, I don't know if I'm just making this up for, mm -hmm. for a metric that would be helpful, is somehow calculating what this, the savings, the time savings is for each of these employees to justify the expense. So you can say, well, yes, we are showing now a new line item budget that we didn't previously have. Sure. But what we're gaining there is more productivity or, you know, freeing up 1,500, you know, man hours, uh, whatever, per month or something, and, and somehow translating that into, or distilling this all down into maybe a single number exchange, like the value that we're getting for what we're paying. Since I know, at least in this, uh, I know there are a lot of budget discussions in the seat on, on a lot of different matters right now. And uh, we're, we, we even have budget um, uh, items on the ballot. And so that may be helpful for your sure. justification in talking with city council and Exactly why I asked about performance measurements. So sure. that, that becomes part of that component is the cost per and the efficiency as part of the data that can be demonst can demonstrate a cost efficiency for employee time, et cetera. And also the the feedback from the public on the public work or public stuff end of it that the the public can see where their uh, funding is going or where their contributions are going. That's, well. that's excellent. What I do know is that um, our admin staff uh, on average spend 30 hours a week uh, manually uh, inputting information into a, a work order, which is a paper work orders. So that's off the bat right there. Um, for us to dive into it deeper is, um, is, yeah, we'll find a lot of discrepancies where we can be more efficient. And to put a number on that is what, when we go to council, I'd really like to show them everything we do in public works operations on this is, these are where there are deficiencies and here's where, the, where are the efficiencies and here's what it will cost. So, great point. Any other uh, questions from the commission? Comments? Do we have a motion to uh, for recommend that this item be forwarded to city council? I'll motion. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, the motion carries. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Roberts. Um, next agenda item four, consideration of a presentation and discussion of amending, amending title 13.08, article four of the municipal code relating to maintenance of building sewers and lateral sewers. Is that you again? I think it is. Great. <laughs> Welcome back. Yes, thank you. Okay. This item was uh, brought before the Environmental Utilities Commission on August 13th of 2018. Uh, a first reading of the Ordinance 18-1 and many chapter 13.08, uh, Title 13, Article 4 of Municipal Code relating to the maintenance of building sewers and lateral sewers was brought before City Council on September 5th of 2018. City uh, Council recommended returning to the Commission to vote on amending chapter 13.08, Title 13, Article 4, of the Municipal Code relating to maintenance of building sewers and lateral sewers. The second reading and consideration of the adoption of Ordinance 18-1 will return to Council on September 19th, 2018. Staff presented, let's see, let me back up a little bit, apologies. Staff respectfully request that the Commission review Ordinance 18-1 Provide feedback and make a motion in support of the first reading of Ordinance 18-1, amending Chapter 13.08, Title 13, Article 4 of the Municipal Code relating to the maintenance of building sewers and lateral sewers. Thank you. I have a, I have a question about cleanouts. I've, I'm, and, and the reason I have, I guess, actually several questions about cleanouts is I was struck by the difference between what the city's practice has been for uh, homeowners who don't have them when and it says in the in the report that when there's a sewer overflow and the, and the um, homeowner doesn't have a clean out the city's practice has been to install one free of charge 
Um, and now the ordinance is, I guess, changing so that um, home or homeowners who don't currently have clean outs um, will be responsible for the entirety of the of the sewer lateral, in, including the the lower lateral in the streets. I'm I'm curious one if that practice is going to continue with the enactment of this ordinance. I'm also I guess I'm curious what a clean out is like if I looked at my house sure. <laughs> where would it be and if I didn't have sure. one how much would it cost to install sure okay so um, basically uh, a lot a lot of the homes will have two clean outs and the customers are they get confused about the clean outs when you walk out your home and you see a clean out like pretty close to your garage um, you know that's not the city's responsibility usually um, well, our clean out is usually one to two feet behind walk so you'll see a second clean out uh, closer to the uh, the sidewalk. So from that clean out, uh, which I call the point of service, a lot of people don't, but I do. From that point of service, um, that clean out to the house is the homeowner's responsibility. From that clean out to the main, which is the city street, is the uh, city's responsibility. Um, you mentioned that um, if there are no clean outs installed, the responsibility lies on the uh, homeowner, which is correct. Uh, the city of West Sacramento operations, um, if we receive a call for a sanitary sewer overflow, we will respond. And if there is no clean out installed, we will install one at no cost to the customer. And uh, we're going to clean the lower lateral. And uh, we're going to advise and let the homeowner know that, hey, look, if the blockage is on their side, which is a clean out towards the building or the house, we're going to advise them, hey, look, here's the best way to do this. You know, we're not just going to walk away and say, this is your responsibility, we're out of here. So I think it's very important for the customers and the people at home to, to know that Public Works Operations, we're, we're here for you. We're, we're not, you know, we're not going to change any code. This has been um, a practice, uh, ongoing practice for a very long time for the City of West Sacramento. We're just making it more clear for the residents, which I think is fair. Uh, we introduced uh, two new terms, which is the upper lateral and lower lateral. And um, this really separates and tells the customer where their point the where their um, point of service is and their responsibility upper lateral will be from the clean out to the building or home and lower lateral will be from the clean out to the street so nothing nothing will change uh, we're, we're doing business as usual and I want the, the folks at home know that uh, we're not just going to walk away if uh, there's an SSO we clean our end our side and just and just leave them. That's not going to happen. And, and the city is going to continue to continue its practice of installing a clean out if there isn't one and there is an SSO. That's correct. Okay, great. How That's much does correct. it cost for the city to install a clean out? Mr. Vinke, can help. <laughs> Good evening, commissioners. Uh, you know, back to your question about what is a clean out. It's essentially, it's an elbow that ties into your sewer line that allows. Uh, there's. The two cleanouts that uh, Mr. Roberts mentioned, one is at the building, the other is usually near the right-of-way line or within some easement. Um, that is considered the city cleanout or the point of service as you referred to. The cleanout closer to the building is intended for, for the homeowner. If you need to clear the pipe between the building and the city cleanout, that is the homeowner's responsibility. Um, as far as the cost of construction of cleanout, uh, you know, it could be several hundred dollars. Depends. Some of the cleanouts that are located in the driveway, you'll see a, you know, a steel round circular lid with a concrete uh, encasement. Uh, in the lawn area, it's usually just a green plastic lid. Uh, but really, the cost will range from, including installation, uh, $500 to $1,000. Uh, you note know, the there's a slide on the screen you can refer to that <laughs> now are, are, excuse me are we referring to the uh, thirteen eight one forty the maintenance that amendment that's correct okay point and, yeah one four zero right one four zero and um, so this language we think is clear for that I mean we have had questions from the commissioners both times this the August meeting and this meeting about what we're talking about with clean out and which one is which um, so I just want to make sure that we think that in terms of uh, public interpretation of who's responsible for which clean out and 
Also, I, I, th I think it's great that the chair pointed out that there would be a maintaining of existing practice. Um, but I just wonder if that is um, in consideration of the language here, if this is going to be clear to the public that th they're responsible for this particular portion, but yet we're, we're still calling it a clean out, but it's a different clean out. And I just want to double check on that. I'm not having dealt with this issue personally sure. before. Um, that this is going to be the best language possible, clearer language for the, the folks out there who may encounter this problem in the future, especially in the northern area where we have older homes True. Um, and a different, um, you know, generally older population or, you know, a different dynamics in terms of um, the identities of this population. Sure. Given the two new terms that were that we uh, we come up with, upper lateral and lower lateral, um, we made clear uh, definition of the area of responsibility. Uh, when it comes to the ownership of the entire uh, uh, side sewer, we call it, um, a lot of the uh, residents, they, they get confused. And I think basically what I know is it's going to be a lot of public outreach and education to the, uh, especially people in the north of uh, West Sacramento, the older homes. Uh, there's different methodologies we can do. We can put a flyer in the bill, which would ex explain, uh, you know, the full side sewer. And if something were to happen, of course, we will respond, install a clean out at no cost to the customer. Uh, another way we can do is um, is uh, hang some uh, door knockers on there and describe um, what we're talking about with the change of the code. Uh, but there's different ways we can do it, and. Um, but I fully agree in that um, we want to make it as clear as possible to the customer on um, the, um, the ownership of the whole entire side lateral. Uh, and if something were to happen, then we're there for them. Uh, and we will install a clean out at no cost to the customer. Okay, and, and as a follow up to that, I appreciate um, what you're saying. Uh, also, there's a, a language, there is a diversity there, uh, again, in the north area, just um, will we be able to cover multiple languages in these mm -hmm. inserts um, that you mentioned in the bill or um, any kind of outreach on, um, you know, hanging something on the door, sure. some kind of, you know, just to make sure, again, this is government speak to a set, to, you know, and that we're making sure that it's as clear as we can uh, sure. given the subject. <laughs> yeah, I'll talk to my public information officer, the best way to do that, uh, it's a great point. And, and, and I agree. So we'll, we'll come up with something and, uh, to uh, educate the public. Yeah. Okay, thank yeah. you. Um, I just wanted to say that I, and let the commissioners know, um, I had this exact issue and I went to him after our last meeting, talked to it, and the city has been really great about um, helping with our clean out and being attentive and communicating with me and I actually came home today and I saw that it was fixed. <laughs> and so, great. and they just gonna, they're gonna put concrete down. So it's an easy process and the city is really communicative. So I, I just wanted to convey that to all of you is to know that his words are, are true. So <laughs> Thank you, that means a lot. And you know, I think that's a great point because it could be a case by case basis where if you have a problem at your location or your residence, we go out there, we do the work, we educate the, the customer and let he or she know uh, what we can and cannot do. But to be proactively engaging, that's something we can reach out to the public as well. So there's two ways that we can do that, case by case, and then actually putting something out to the public. All right, thank you. Hearing no further questions, I believe we've been asked to vote. Uh, whether or not we approve of amending Chapter 13.08, Title 13, Article 4 of the Municipal Code as outlined in the staff report. Um, do we have a motion to approve? A motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Thank you again, Mr. Roberts. Thank you. All right, moving to item 5A, Environment and Utilities Commission calendar. The next regular meeting of the Environment and Utilities Commission is scheduled for Monday, October 8th, 2018.
Uh, item 5B, any reports from city staff? None at this time. All right, thank you. Item 5C, any future agenda item requests by the Environment and Utilities Commission? All right, then we are adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>